Hi everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today with a really, really fun dyeing experiment. I have created this crochet chain out of one 100 gram skein of sock yarn. This is the Stroll Knit Pick Stroll Base that is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. But I have created this by doubling the ends of the yarn over, creating a crochet chain multiple times. So first, I took two strands of the yarn together and I created a really loose crochet chain, almost like, a, like something I would maybe do for a short end ply for a spin. Then I wound it into a center pull ball, took the two ends of the crochet chain, held them together, and created sort of this intermediate sized crochet chain. Then I took two ends of that together and created one final crochet chain. So we have doubled this over three different times. So if we dip dye this big crochet chain, we'll get some kind of gradient and a really cool gradient yarn, but this will be more of a repeating gradient because you'll have um, some repeats of the way these sections sort of transition. The other thing that's gonna be really, really fun about this is that we will also, it's not gonna be a smooth transition. We will have speckling, we will have breaking within these sections because you know, while there's a lot of fiber that has access to the surface, there are sections that have less access, both sort of in each level of the crocheting. But ultimately things are done pretty loosely. So I don't know, I'm excited and curious to see how this is gonna turn out. So I already need to offer a correction for myself. I started with 250 gram skeins of yarn. Um, you can see that we have the four ends of the yarn here. And I did that to help eliminate some of the twist, some of the twisting at the beginning of this process. Today I am gonna work from a hot plate um, on my kitchen island instead of using my stovetop. One of the reasons why I'm doing this today is to show that you can use a hot plate or an electric stove or something. But the other reason is that while I'm filming this episode, I'm filming a behind the scenes sneak peeks for Chemnitz patrons. And in order to do that setup, I have to have two tripods and cameras going at the same time. And it makes it really difficult uh, with my stove in a corner for me to then be able to access it personally. Um, if I had two tripods over there. Um, so if you would like to get a chance to see some, some of these Dye Pot Weekly episodes and some of the dyeing techniques before the videos are edited and released to the public, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. There's a link in the video description. In this dye path, I have eight cups of water and I am gonna add one tablespoon white vinegar. Uh, approximately, but over one tablespoon. I want the dye to absorb a little bit slowly. This will give some of the blues a chance to penetrate deeper into our crochet chain of crochet chains. So that way, um, maybe we'll see more blue versus white patches on the interior. Today I'm gonna add just under a half teaspoon of Wilton's Violet's Wilton's Violet icing color um, into half a cup of water. This is the proportion that I use a lot for 100 grams of, of yarn and it's one that I really like the intensity of the colors that come out. Um, it does take you know a tiny bit of stirring to get it to dissolve but that is what we are used to. Uh, I let, ended up letting this braid pre-soak for close to, I guess close to an, a couple hours in just some plain tap water so that the fibers are nice and saturated. And I'm trying not to deform this braid too much, but you can see that being wet, it's sort of less fluffy than it was before. After removing this from the water, I was looking at this braid and trying to think about how I wanted to dip dye it. And I decided that Given that this has been folded over multiple times anyway, why not hold two of the ends together and start dipping in the middle to give us yet another 
sort of shift in the way this gradient will go through the yarn. Our pot of water is just below a boil. It seems like the temperature control in here is really actually pretty nice. Um, we've got our dye that we mixed and I'm going to add this to the pot and then start dip dyeing. Um, there's a little bit left on the spoon so that's why I am just sort of adding that real quick. Um, okay, we're going to start dipping. Yeah, this is going to be pretty, but I have to be careful and not go too, too, too fast. Um, the, like the Wilton's Violet tends to strike really, really quickly. Ooh, you can kind of see some like white patches from these chains. Wilton's Violet will sort of absorb really, really fast, but since less of the yarn is accessible right now, that means that um, more of the, these pinks are sort of going to be striking on the outside. And of course I don't have tongs with me today. Aha, but we might be at the blue. Uh, it's still looking a little purple to me. The runoff is starting to look blue. Okay, I'm going to have to put that in. And can I reach my tongs? Of course not. Um, oh, but I have this. Do, do, do. Yeah, so this, um, you know, just so like when I did the crochet blank, I don't think I got the bright blues. I think I went in a little bit fast on here. But I am hopeful that within, sort of within this yarn, we will see some of these blues. I ground my tongs in a spoon, and while this is blue-ish, it's still a purple blue. There's no doubt, oh, if I pick that up, you can see a little bit of white in there. I'm gonna gently stir this. Um, I did start off with just one tablespoon of vinegar in here, and that does slow things down. But maybe once, okay, I think we're looking more and more blue, but the last end that went in, let me see if I can find the ends. Yeah, I mean, I do see some blues there, but it's very, very purpley. So hopefully some of these blues, okay, yeah, we're definitely getting these blues left. I could add more vinegar right now and I could up the heat a bit more, but I don't want to. I want these blues to soak through as much as they can. If we still have a subtle gradient that has white speckles and is like a pink purple to a purple purple, it'll still be gorgeous. But the dip dyeing goes a lot slower when you have a lot more dye or like a lot less surface area for the dyes to absorb to. So I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes and then we'll come and double check and see how this is going. It has been 10 minutes and that dye is looking pretty clear. So I am going to uh, turn off the heat entirely. Now, this thing takes a long time to cool. So once you know I stop filming, I'll probably move this onto a different burner, um, but so that way it can actually cool off. Um, but you know, if we look at this, you know, so in here I do see some subtle variations of color, sort of just picking up and moving it. And even in here, I see some white and I see some, some pale blues, sort of this intermediate section. Um, and I think a little more blues in this lighter section. So I think that we're gonna get something really, really beautiful. But right now, I'm gonna let this cool completely, or at least cool a little bit, and then I will remove it from the pot. The yarn had a little bit of time to cool off, but uh, I don't really have stovetop space, and I know it, it will not cool if I leave it in this pot. But look at how clear that water is. So I'm trying to let some of that water drain, and then I'm just sort of popping it in to one of those round bowls that I love, and now I can really give it space to cool completely. Our chain has cooled off, so now we can rinse out any excess color or anything like that, but we definitely have some beautiful, beautiful blues peeking through. This will probably take a little bit of time. Oh yeah, all that color is in the yarn. 
it'll probably take a little bit of time to dry just because there are so many layers here. But I am really, really excited with how this has turned out. I'm now gonna add a little bit of dish soap. Just put a little bit on my hand. And then, when I'm not fumbling, to let the water run over my hand so the soap goes in into the water. And I find that this is sometimes helpful to help uh, some residual dye come out, maybe. Um, it's not a step that's absolutely necessary. Um, it's just one that is my personal preference. So I'm now going to rinse out the rest of the soap and then hang this, well, it's not quite yarn, but hang this crochet chain up to dry so then we can unravel it. Here is our dry dip dye braid. And you can already see that in the washing we unraveled a little bit. And so you can see some of the, I guess, the big speckles we got from the presence of the stitches and the way that the colors were breaking. And that we definitely will have some white patches in here. And I'm just really excited to unravel this and get a better sense of what is inside. All right, I am going ahead and unraveling this first chain. Oh, I pulled, it looked like I pulled some yarn out. You can see we've got some more blue sort of in these interior sections. But I will organize this a little bit in just a second. After one level of unraveling, we now have, this is our crochet chain of crochet chains that we have right here. And we go through like, we have two big sections of magenta and then three little sections of sort of the lighter color. Um, I'm curious if we will see that this looks to be more amplified as we unravel this again, but I'm expecting that after the next level it'll only look even more speckled than what we see right now. But I'm actually not going to unravel it right now. I might do that in a live stream. I was just so excited that I couldn't wait to just see at the shortest level what our yarn looked like. Unraveling the next section was a piece of cake. Now I just have to hope that unraveling this final loose crochet chain will not cause too many problems. Here you can see some of that original crochet chain. So you can get a sense of just how loosely I hand crocheted it. Here is the unraveled speckly yarn still wound on our Nitty Knotty. I think that the overall effect is a bit more subtle than what I was hoping for. I think I sort of forgot that when you're dip dyeing to break Wilton's Violet, if you have limited surface area, you don't get the as dramatic of the breaking because the reds just can't absorb as fast because they aren't really traveling through the yarn. I did start the unraveling of this yarn in a live stream, and you can find that link in the video description. Nevertheless, this yarn is a lot of fun, and really one of a kind. There is a lot of variegated patching in here, so and it's a bit busy, so it would be best suited for a more simple sock pattern versus one that is more complex. But with these matched skeins, you can get a beautiful matched set of socks. It is a little hard to pick out the striping pattern, but if you zoom in, you can get a sense of the darker and lighter patches. I think that this would have been a little more obvious if I had dipped this crochet chain of crochet chains of crochet chains um, if I dipped one end into one color and, and the other end into the other. Is this technique worth the effort? Um, it took me a while to unravel it because at the very end the, the yarn was twisted around each other. Is it worth all that trouble to get this yarn? The yarn is beautiful. And one benefit of this technique is that you don't need any special equipment. Uh, you aren't paying for a commercially wound sock blank, and you don't need to buy a knitting machine to create that blank yourself. You might be better served hand crocheting a blank 
versus doing this technique, just in the amount of prep time. But I will say that the prep was fairly mindless and didn't require a ton of focus while I was working on preparing the fire. That being said, I do have one more of these crochet chain of crochet chains that I had made out of worsted weight yarn. And I think that the technique is a lot more worthwhile if you aren't dealing with over 460 yards of yarn. But that is just my personal opinion. I think that this was fun, I love the result, but I would personally be more inclined to fold and dip a commercial sock blank versus creating this again. Would you like to try this technique? I'd love to hear what you think, so please leave a comment on the video to let me know your opinion. As for what's next for this fiber, the yarn has a little bit of a crimp to it. It did dry as a cro crochet chain after all. So I'm actually going to go soak this yarn in some plain tap water for a little while and then sort of snap it and hang it up to dry to help uh, reduce this crimp. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I release at least two new dyeing videos every week and I do frequent live streams and you really don't want to miss a thing. I love to experiment with different ways to apply color to yarn and like this, do something a little bit outside of the box and we created something really beautiful today. If you would like to support the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, check out the Chemnitz Patreon, you can find a link in the video description, or go check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store where you can find yarn for sale that has been dyed in my video tutorials. Thank you so much for watching.